The time is 8.12 and we're returning from closed session. At this time, I would like to ask item six, ask the city attorney to please report out. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. No reportable action was taken in closed session on that item. Okay, thank you very much. The time is uh, 7.13, I'm sorry, it was 7.12. The time is 7.13 p.m. and I am adjourning the special closed session meeting. Sherry, before I begin the next meeting in one minute, do you need me to reread the announcement for all of these meetings? Um, I think since you're starting on the on the regular um, meetings, yes, read it one more time before Mesa and then you're good for the rest of the evening. Okay, thank you. And I'm doing an abridged version, no offense, I don't want to read that long thing. I think we're, people know where we're at, so. None taken. Thank you. I, I, I look for a way to crop it quite a bit so I can be sufficient. Yes. Good evening, everybody. The time is 8.14 p.m. Sorry, the time is 7.14 p.m. And I'd like to call to order the uh, Management of Emeryville Services Authority meeting for the City of Emeryville. At this time, would the City Clerk please take the roll. Council Member Donahue? Here. Council Member Martinez? Here. Council Member Welch? Here. Vice Mayor Medina? Here. And Mayor Bowders? Here. And at this point, before I go through our announcements, would somebody like to approve the final agenda? I move approval of the final agenda. I'll second. Okay, there was a motion made by Member Donahue and a second by Member Welch to approve this agenda. Please call the roll. Council Member Donahue? Aye. Council Member Martinez? Aye. Council Member Welch? Aye. Vice Mayor Medina? Aye. And Mayor Bowders. Aye. For those who haven't been uh, paying attention for the last two years, uh, we are dealing with the coronavirus pandemic, and because of that, we have been conducting meetings via teleconference. Recently, the law changed, and under Assembly Bill 361, we're allowed to continue meeting with exceptions to the Brown Act pursuant to those guidance uh, requirements. Under that, we can continue to do that through January 1st, 2024, so long as there's a governor declared state of emergency, and not less than every 30 days, the successor agency, city council, and the Mesa board reconsider the circumstances into determining whether or not state of emergency exists and that the safety and health of people and the public is best accommodated by continuing to meet via teleconference. You can still conduct business at city hall and visit our website to learn how to do that if you need an appointment. Uh, we will accept public comments submitted by an online speaker card, which you can find on our city website, emeryville.org, going to council agendas and videos, and clicking the link that says submit an online speaker card. If you're joining us by Zoom, you can use the raise hand feature, or you can press star nine if you're joining us by telephone tonight. So with that said, is there um, any ex parte communications to report for the Mesa board meeting? Okay, seeing none, is there any public comment for items not on this agenda tonight? I have no speaker Jerry, cards. Okay, we have no speaker cards and I see no hands raised. Public comment being ended. We'll move now to the consent calendar. Members, are there any questions? Seeing none, is there a motion? I move the consent calendar. I'll second. There's a motion by Member Donahue and a second by Vice Mayor Medina to approve the consent calendar. Please call the roll. Council Member Donahue? Aye. Council Member Martinez? Aye. Council Member Welch? Aye. Vice Mayor Medina? Aye. And Mayor Bowders? I, the next item is item 7.1, which is a resolution of the Board of Directors of the Mesa Board, making the findings required to allow for the continuation of remote meetings. Uh, there is no presentation on this item. Is there any public comment? No. no public comment and no written cards, as what I heard Sherry say. We will move to discussion. Members, is there anything to discuss? The circumstances for the findings are outlined in the resolution. Seeing no discussion, is there a motion? I move the motion. I'll second. Motion by Member Donahue and a second by Vice Mayor Medina to approve this mo this resolution. Please call the roll. Council Member Donahue. Aye. Council Member Martinez. Aye. Council Member Welch. Aye. Vice Mayor Medina. Aye. And Mayor Bowders. Aye. The resolution is approved. The time is 7.17 p.m. and I'm adjourning this special meeting of the Mesa Board. The time is 7.17 p.m. I'd like to call to order the City of Emeryville as successor agency to the Emeryville Redevelopment Agency. Please note that all members remain present for this meeting. This time I'll entertain a motion to approve this agenda. So moved. Second. Motion by Member Welch and a second by Member Donahue to approve the agenda. Please call the roll. Council Member Donahue. Aye. Council Member Martinez. Aye. Council Member Welch. Aye. Vice Mayor Medina. Aye. And Mayor Bowders. Aye, the agenda being approved. We'll move now to ex parte communications. Is there anything that members wish to report? 
Seeing none, we move to item five, which is public comment for the consent agenda or items not on this agenda. Any member of the public wishing to make comment will be afforded three minutes to do so. Did you receive any comment cards for this meeting, Sherry? I did not. Okay, no hands being raised. Public comment is now closed. We'll move to item six, which is our consent calendar. Are there any questions or comments about the consent calendar? Seeing none, is there a motion on the consent calendar? I'll move consent. Second. Motion by Vice Mayor Medina and a second by Member Donahue to approve the consent calendar's items. Please call the roll. Council Member Donahue? Aye. Council Member Martinez? Aye. Council Member Welch? Aye. Vice Mayor Medina? Aye. And Mayor Bowders? Aye. Item 7.1 is approved. Um, item 7.1 is a resolution of the city councils as a successor agency to the redevelopment agency, allowing for the continuation of remotely held meetings pursuant to Assembly Bill 361. Members, is there anything to discuss? Seeing none, is there any public comment? Seeing none, would anyone like to make a motion? So moved. Second. Motion by Member Welch, second by Member Donahue to approve this resolution. Please call the roll. Council Member Donahue? Aye. Council Member Martinez? Aye. Council Member Welch? Aye. Vice Mayor Medina? Aye. And Mayor Bowers? Aye. The resolution is approved. The time is 7.19 p.m. This meeting is adjourned. Madam Clerk, the time is 7.19 p.m. I call to order this meeting of the City Council of the City of Emeryville. Please note that all members are still present. This time I'll entertain a motion to approve the final agenda. So moved. Second. Motion by Vice Mayor Medina and a second by Member Welch to approve this agenda. Please call the roll. Council Member Donahue? Aye. Council Member Martinez? Aye. Council Member Welch? Aye. Vice Mayor Medina? Aye. And Mayor Bowders. Aye. The agenda being approved, we'll move now to special orders of the day. At this time, I would like to just ask, uh, take the liberty to ask if um, members would be um, receptive to um, me inviting for the second meeting in March, uh, inviting the Consul General of the Nation of Ireland, who has um, offered generously to come and speak to us, to come and speak during special orders of the day um, about the role and history of Irish Americans for a few minutes. Is there anybody who has, I technically this is a space reserved for the mayor for proclamations, but um, being that it is a foreign dignitary, I felt like I should just ask if anybody has an objection to me inviting the Irish consulate. Okay. None whatsoever. Says the man whose last name is Donahue. Um, okay. So um, with that, I, I just uh, want to uh, move on from special orders of the day. Okay, so uh, number five is announcements of city commission and committee vacancies, Madam Clerk. Uh, yes, tonight I'd like to announce that we are going to take another run at those um, unexpected vacancies that we have. We have one for budget advisory committee, one for commission on aging, one for economic development advisory committee, one for the housing committee, and one for public art. Um, and they have various um, requirements for the type of representative, but you can see that all when you go to our website. The applications are due on April 4th by end of business at 5, and if we get some good applicants, the appointments are scheduled to be made at the May 3rd City Council meeting. We have distributed this information to all of our committee secretaries who are in turn going to encourage all of their members to get the word out to their friends and colleagues, and I would ask the council to do the same, to be on the lookout for qualified applicants for these positions so we can get them filled. Thank you. You're very welcome. Madam Clerk, do you have like a single web page where all those are posted that if you shared a link with council members, we could share that more publicly? I do. There's a there's a link that shows you what the vacancies are and, and so forth and where how to get to the application. So I'll do I'll send that out after this meeting. Thank you very much for that. Members, are there any questions about vacancies? Okay, seeing none, we'll move to agenda item number six. Uh, council member special announcements or reports on meetings and attendance. Does anybody wish to report on anything anything exciting happening at the Gilman JPA? Remember Martinez. That's a, it's not that exciting. But um, Stop Waste was undergoing work to consider the use of disposable foodware in our restaurants just when coronavirus hit. Um, and it's something that we are looking at again. Uh, the way that the board has decided to approach this issue um, in the beginning is piloting the availability of reusables in um, our local restaurants here in Alameda County. So if anyone knows of a restaurant that might be looking for assistance in switching from disposable foodware to reusable, um, 
either for takeout or for in uh, restaurant use. Um, obviously, during uh, the pandemic, the use of disposable foodware went way up, unfortunately, but um, we, we would like to be part of the solution to help businesses um, find ways to incorporate um, uh, reusable wares in um, their businesses. So if anyone has any one they'd like to point in that direction, um, Stop Waste is available with technical assistance and um, some grants as well. So they can point them to me. And um, for those that anyone watching at home or um, joining us via Zoom can reach me at my city council email address, which is dmartinez at emeryville.org. Thank you for that update. Anyone else have an update? Vice Mayor Med Mer uh, Medina. Um, East Bay EDA has announced that they're going to do their innovation awards in person. Uh, Emeryville is typically very competitive for having some finalists there. Uh, so I'd be willing to wager that we'll have some Emeryville businesses in attendance. So I suggest you all start thinking about how to get dressed for leaving the house at some point in the next few months. <laughs> do you know what the date of the event is? Um, I don't have the final date yet, but I will share that with next day. Okay. They said oh, September. Usually, I was just looking through the agenda and it's not listed in there. Yeah, isn't it usually in like May, sometime around there, I feel like? They're pushing it, I think, so they could have it, an in-person one this year to, I believe, September, but I'm like looking through the oh. packet and it doesn't have the date right now. Okay. Well, thank you for that update. Anybody else have an update? I have an, uh, an update and a statement of appreciation, which is that um, last Monday, the city of Emeryville hosted Caltrans headquarters in the city. Uh, we had Tokes Amashakran, who was, who was the director when he arrived in Emeryville, um, along with a number of his staff. We had uh, Dina El Tawansi, who was the district board director, and we had David um, Abul, who is the deputy director. And uh, we were joined in the morning by Christine Daniel, we had um, Mike Roberts, we had uh, Mohammed Alawi, we had uh, AC Transit present along with their staff, and the AC, uh, the Alameda County Transportation Commission also came. It was an opportunity for us. Um, I was elected the chair of the Transportation Commission and Elsa Ortiz, who's the president of the AC Transit Board, is the vice chair. Um, counties in the region are have items on a wish list for SB1 funding. And we have two such items in Alameda County. One is rail safety enhancements, which are many of them are gonna be modeled off of what we did in Emeryville. And we'll have a little conversation about that in a future agenda item this evening. And the second is, um, the East Bay Greenway, which uh, similarly has uh, some hearkenings back to what we're doing with the Emeryville Greenway. And so we had a bicycle tour of Emeryville for an hour. Um, Tokes was named the Secretary of Transportation while he was here in Emeryville, uh, which was somewhat exciting. And uh, we took a bus tour to look at the Powell Street um, improvements that are going to be coming. We talked about um, hydrogen fuel and some other alternative um, fuel sources and it was an overall extremely positive experience and Caltrans um, has uh, reached out and asked to work more closely with us on a number of items of interest to our city and I just really want to elevate the work that our public work staff and our city manager do um, on behalf of the the city to put so many good projects through such a small city um, our work and being able to deliver such high quality projects has made us very attractive for additional uh, forms of funding and I am I'm happy to report we are very actively pursuing funding and I hope to come back to you in a couple months with some very positive updates on that front as well. So I just want to give a shout out uh, as to a, a special uh, meeting was attended via bicycle and bus that uh, we, we hosted here in the city recently. Okay, at this time we'll go to the city manager's report. Madam City Manager. Nothing this evening. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Okay, thank you. Um, this next item is the ex parte communications for items on this agenda. Do any members have things that they wish to report for this agenda? Okay, seeing none, now is the time for public comment. Members of the public who wish to comment for an item on the consent calendar or not on this agenda will be afforded three minutes to do so. Do any members of the public wish to speak? I see no hands raised. Sherry, did we receive a speaker card this evening? No speaker cards. Okay, public comment is now closed. We move to the consent agenda. Members, are there any items that you wish to discuss or remove from the consent agenda for any reason? Seeing I would no like to uh, compliment okay. the redoing of the street sweeping schedule in our neighborhood. Thank you. Thank you for mentioning that, and thank you to the residents in the um, Park Avenue neighborhood who uh, brought some of those uh, issues to our attention and to our staff for working with the Transportation Committee and the Council to get that resolved. I appreciate you raising that, Member Donahue. 
Anybody else wish to comment on anything on the consent calendar? If not, I'll entertain a motion. I move approval. Second. Okay, okay. there we go, thank you. I have a motion from Member Donahue and a second from Member Martinez to approve the consent calendar. Please call the roll. Council Member Donahue. Aye. Council Member Martinez. Aye. Council Member Welch. Aye. Vice Mayor Medina. Aye. And Mayor Bowders. Aye, the consent calendar has been approved. We're in no public hearings tonight. We'll move to action items. Item 12.1 is a resolution of the City Council of the City of Emeryville, authorizing the City Manager to enter into a contract with Bay City's paving and grading in an amount of $2.2 million and authorizing the City Manager to approve payments or of possible additional costs as contingency expenditures up to $454,000 for the construction of TCEP quiet zone safety engineering measures with a project number. And um, I'm going to ask the city manager if she'd like to introduce uh, the presentation for who our guests from Public Works are tonight. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I am thrilled to bring this before you and I'm very appreciative of, of having this on the action calendar tonight. Um, your presenters are uh, your Public Works Director, Muhammad Alawi, and our senior civil engineer, Ryan O'Connell, who I think deserves an enormous amount of credit for carrying this project forward. Um, he's here tonight to give you an overview of what will be coming to Emeryville thanks to his excellent work and the wonderful support from the California Transportation Commission um, and our other partners, including especially ACTC, who came to the rescue last year. So with that, I'd like to turn it over to Mr. O'Connell. Welcome, Ryan. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Honorable City Council, uh, for having me tonight to make this presentation. And thrilled was a great word to use, Christine. Um, yeah, uh, we are thrilled to have this project come before you today. Um, so I'll be here today to talk about our Quiet Zone Safety Engineering Measures Project. Uh, we have a contract with Bay City's Paving and Grading um, up for approval. Um, can you move to that next slide? So a little bit of background for the general public. Um, we have uh, three at-grade crossings in Emeryville. And as you know, if you live in town or within a few miles of uh, Emeryville, uh, we have train horns constant throughout the day. And uh, train horns are required to be sounded uh, 15 seconds in advance of crossing. So every train passing through throughout the day um, is making this train horn and uh, to the detriment of our general public. And why is this? Um, in 2005, the Federal Railroad Administration issued regulations requiring locomotive and horns to be sounded in advance of all public highway railroad crossings. So since 2005, and even a little bit before it, um, there's been a lot of effort from our city to um, get rid of these, <laughs> you know, these train horns. So uh, there was a study in 2008 that the city undertook, um, and shortly thereafter, there was a unfunded project in our CIP. So th this project is really, you know, nearly two decades in the making. And um, what we have uh, with this FRA ruling is the option as a city to silence train horns by establishing a quiet zone. And what does that mean? Let's go to the next slide. Next slide, please. Sure. Oh, there you go. Oops. Oh, uh, <laughs> that's fine. And then, uh, so, so like I said, we have three at-grade crossings in town. Um, everywhere else in the city of Emeryville, within our city limits, we have a um, uh, overcrossing at Powell and an overcrossing near Ikea along Shell Mountain 40. The other crossings we have at town are at-grade. They're here in this screenshot at 66 six, six and 67. So as the trains approach these crossings, they need to sound their horn. And what we can do as a city is we can install some supplemental safety measures at each of these crossings. And what that will do is allow us to establish a quiet zone, which means that the trains uh, uh, do not have the requirement to sound the horns as they approach these crossings. They may still sound the horn if they see a danger or something there, uh, but for the most part, they will not need to uh, do the 15 second train horn every time they cross these crossings. Next slide. So what we're proposing to do with this project is at 65th Street, we are proposing to put in quad gates, new sidewalks on each side of the, of the crossing, and pedestrian gates. And, and along with that, a lot of new fencing to prevent trespassing and entries into the track area by vehicles, people, or whatnot. Um, as you can see below um, in the 
black and white photo, you can also see that we are going to be putting in some bike lanes um, going through this process. Next slide. At 66, as we started getting into the scope work of this project and in a negotiation with the Union Pacific Railroad, we found out shortly that these, uh, the spacing of these three crossings is way too tight. Um, these are class one um, crossings in the UP uh, grading scale. So they are you know, heavy freight coming through there. Um, there's more than 50 trains a day coming through here. There's a lot of vehicles coming through each of these crossings. and. So a tier one crossing is uh, what is considered a dangerous crossing if you don't have the right supplemental safety measures. So as we went through negotiations, uh, we came to the conclusion that we need a full closure at 66th Street. Next slide. And at 67th Street, what we were able to do is a quad gates uh, sidewalk on the south side of the street, uh, pedestrian gates also on the south side of the street, and then a new traffic signal at Shell Mountain 67th here um, to help, uh, uh, you know, traffic as it comes through here. Additionally, since we were closing 66th Street, we also were able to fit into the scope of this project and the grant um, a new signal at Hollis and 67th, which also has other benefits to our community. Next slide. So <clears throat> at each of these crossings, this is an example from uh, other jurisdictions in California of what it can look like uh, when we install the quad gates. So you'll see uh, two crossing arms on each side of the track, uh, fully closing off the crossing. On the sidewalk side, you'll see a short stubby, um, uh, you know, uh, crossing arm for the pedestrian area, and then a lot of fencing at uh, about a four foot height, three, three to four foot height um, for visibility, and then also for uh, to prevent trespassing into the track area as the train is approaching. So this is one of the safest methods and best practices of uh, making an at grade crossing safe to cross for, for all modes of travel. Next slide. So how are we paying for this thing? Um, as you can see, there's a lot of improvements done that, that, that are needed. You know, um, We've done multiple estimates throughout the life of this project. The current estimate is 8.87 million to do this project. And we've, um, with the help of uh, certain members of city council and actually really all of city council, uh, give you all credit, sorry about that. Um, we've been able to secure a grant at the state level through the SB1 gas tax trade quarter enhancement program. That's $4.2 million uh, towards the construction. We've additionally gotten other uh, uh, construction dollars through ACTC measure BB of $1.8 million for the local match for that SB1 grant. And then uh, we were able to reprogram some old CMA TIP funds to also go towards this project. Uh, and that was about a 1.37 million. And then to fill out that pot of money, we used some local city funds, um, you know, a mix of funds that we were able to, you know, scratch around in the couch cushions for. Uh, but we have this project fully funded here. Next slide. So just um, a little recap of where we've uh, come from and where we're at today and where we'll be in the next few years. Um, so in 2018, we got the funds approved at the state level through the SB1 program. We hired a design consultant. We commenced design. We negotiated with UP. It was a lot of fun. I, I loved it so much. Uh, 2021, we uh, finalized our design. Uh, we had UP uh, approve our scope of work. and This included the closure of 66. Um, we, uh, in December of last year, we truly finalized our design, got the bid package ready. We advertised the project and we received bids. So we received four bids for this project. Uh, the lowest uh, parent bidder is Bay City's Paving and Grading. Uh, and that's what we are here for tonight um, to authorize and to um, uh, authorize their contract and approve a, uh, a, uh, a contingency budget for the project. And then we will shortly thereafter be able to enter into construction and, and uh, break ground on this project here in uh, 2022. So um, with that, we're expecting to com uh, complete construction in summer in 2023. There's a little bit of lead time to get some equipment out into this area. Uh, that includes signal pole equipment. So steel is at a premium with a long delay right now. So uh, we're expecting to have it arrive, us to construct and be able to be complete by summer 2023. And then shortly thereafter, and uh, concurrently really as we're doing construction, we're gonna be starting the quiet zone establishment process. So this is a process that's done with the FRA, CQC, 
and UPRR um, to be able to approve our construction as um, as we said we were going to do. Uh, we'll have a 45-day establishment period at a certain point in time, and after that point, uh, the train horn will uh, cease um, or at least be minimized <laughs> in town, and uh, that we're hoping to have that happen in 2024. Next slide. So the actions for city council to consider tonight is to authorize the city manager to enter into a contract with Bay City's pavement grading for the $2.2 uh, million, dollars, as you see there, and authorize the city manager to approve payments of a uh, contingency budget of 454000 all for the construction of the TSEP Quiet Zone Safety Engineering Measures Project. And that's all I have. Thank you, Ryan. Are there clarifying questions about the item? We can have discussion if they're after public comment. I see no clarifying questions. Madam Clerk, do we receive any written comment cards? We did not. Okay, thank you. I see no hands raised. Last call. Okay, public comment being closed. We'll come to discussion. Members, anybody wish to discuss? I Go ahead. Ma uh, Vice Mayor Medina. Oh, I just want to commend Public Works on a job enormously well done, keeping this on track throughout budget shortfalls and during a pandemic is a giant task. Brian, we know you've been extremely focused on it and getting us to this finish line. So thank you so much for that work. This is a really exciting next step and two years to a quiet zone, so close. Thank you, anybody else? Member Martinez? I'd like to hop on and thank um, staff so much for their attention to detail on this. Um, you know, I've lived close to the train tracks at Bay Street and I've lived um, further away in the Triangle neighborhood, but there is not a place in Emeryville where you can get away from the horn. Um, and that extends past Emeryville. So the work that we are, are seeing is um, impacting uh, the com wider community beyond our borders because that train horn doesn't stop on Adeline. So commendations staff, well-deserved. Um, thank you so much. Thank you, Member Donahue. Are the realtors jumping up and down about all the <laughs> increased housing value? And, you know, just like, what, why haven't we heard from property owners who should be flipping out. We, we need to get the designation first, Member Donahue. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, babe. Okay. okay. That's your comment? You're, not, you're good? Okay. Anybody else? Um, so I, I want to just, I want to frame, I, there isn't an audience here tonight. Um, in an odd way, that's befitting for Ryan. But um, in 2018, I had the privilege of serving as the mayor. And in the first month I was here, um, the then city manager and I, and I believe Amber Evans, a couple of us caught wind of this opportunity for the first tranche of SB1 funds um, that were gonna be made available for the train corridor enhancement program, the TSEP program. And I remember going to staff in January and saying, we need to get this money. We've talked about this, it's in the CIP. And there was some, there was some trepidation at first uh, about our ability to complete such a lengthy application in a very short window of time. It was a considerably large application, um, 25 pages is what I recall. And there was a number of points that were designated to community support and I will never forget being told, well, we won't get the 10% of the points for the community support. And I said, I will do that if you all put together the best application. And the community turned out and signed, over 1,200 people signed a letter in support of that application to the state CTC. The staff put a phenomenal package together. And I remember the uh, executive director of the Alameda County Transportation Commission taking me aside after the state approved our grant saying, they had never seen a little city put an application like that together and have so many residents become the public portal for support. We got all 10 points, I believe, for public support. Um, and so we got funded in that, and a lot of projects did not get funded. There was very large competition. And since that, we've, um, those of us on transportation committee in particular, we have journeyed down this magical place. Allie has riprap and I have train horns. And it's a joke at every transportation committee because she checks in with Mike Roberts on her riprap at every meeting, and I check in with Brian about the train horns at every meeting. And this has been a long and arduous process. Um, and Ryan's commitment to seeing this project through um, 
I do not exaggerate when I say it warms my heart to have a public servant working for the city of Emeryville who um, not only is excited to do projects like this, which are really truthfully from a public works perspective, a once in a lifetime opportunity. Not many communities get to do a rail corridor safety project like this. The Caltrans came to Emeryville for a reason. We were one of only two communities in the state that got funding that initial tranche to do a project like this. And so we really are stepping out on the front end. And every time Ryan told me that, well, they want to close 65th Street, and I was like ready to like, I was ready to fly to Omaha to deal with the people with the monocles and the top hats. I was like totally ready to deal with the railroad barons. Um, and I said, well, as soon as you need to unleash me, Ryan, you just tell me and I'm going to go deal with any person who gets in your way. And every time, well, no, I think I got a guy in Roseville. I'm going to work with the guy in Roseville. Ryan navigated um, every single one of these pitfalls and helped us get this project to the place where it is. And yes, we encountered some funding challenges, but this is one of those beautiful things about our city is that staff really leaned in to do this project which is going to be as member martinez noted not just a benefit for emeryville residents who do live up front and center to that train horn but for people all across the region who listen to it at three in the morning and, and whatnot right um and so getting this project to where it is and then encountering the funding challenge and going back to actc and we, we when they wanted to, I call them glorified outhouses, these little signal houses that they have that they wanted to replace. There were $750,000 a pop. And I was like, what is a signal house? And Ryan sent me the signal house. that looks like a little outhouse. I'm like, this is a $750,000 piece of apparatus. And then they wanted a traffic signal. And it was like, I thought they were really gonna kill the project, but every time Ryan found a solution, bike lanes, everything. Um, and so I, I will be honest with you, as someone who really championed the public participation and then the financing part of this, I really wondered if we would ever get this project to this place. This is a massive livability investment in our community and we should all be very proud. And I think we should all be very grateful to Ryan O'Connell that he is the senior civil engineer, or he's a civil engineer. I don't know if his title is senior, but maybe it should be. Um, and uh, here in Emeryville, because uh, this is going to be a really exciting project. I. Um, I will tell everybody now, I do fully intend to demand that there be some form of a groundbreaking ceremony to make the public fully aware of what we're doing. Um, we need to let them know how much we are doing on the public works front this year. That's going to be critical to other things we need to talk to the public about later this year. So I just want to thank you all for supporting this project. And uh, I want to thank the staff and um, Mr. O'Connell, I am grateful to you for your service to the city of Emeryville. Here, here. There we go. Oh my God, we need air horns for the groundbreaking. We, wow. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I don't. I have. I have. I have been thinking about this for a while. Don't get it from us just yet. Okay. We will. We have spring. Springtime. Okay. So. Can don't I? Don't worry. Just... You. You're gonna have. You're gonna put floaties out when the rip rap comes. I've got my thing for the train. Don't worry. So. Mayor Bowders, can I just say, as the newer member on the council, but as someone who lives at 64th in Shell Mound that would like to sleep with their window open, I appreciate this work very much. I, Wonderful. I was wondering if you were going to chime in about the, your proximity, like ground zero for train horns. Oh, you like... all didn't hear it. I was on, I mute myself <laughs> because the train goes by Goodbye. and that first night, <laughs> I'm sleeping with the window open and it was one o'clock in the morning and that horn hit and it woke up absolutely everyone. Cause it's like, oh, they do this in the middle of the night. This is a oh, middle yeah. of the night thing. That's oh true. my gosh. Is that legal? I didn't even know that was legal. <laughs> Unfortunately, <laughs> as we learned it tonight, is. it is. It is legal. Oh, yeah. And you'll hear it at three o'clock in the morning, at one o'clock in the morning, at dead of night. And it's quiet here until the horn hits. So I appreciate this this initiative truly it's going to impact i'm used to it now i mean with the windows closed it's kind of it's not as loud but like i said it it is loud if you have your windows open so it, it is a livability issue sometimes it's warm and i don't necessarily want to turn on the air conditioner and it's the middle of the night so it's like okay do you risk getting woken up with the train horn or do you turn on the air conditioner? So I appreciate everyone's hard work on this very, very, very much. Thank you. If, it if the council would not mind, I would like to make a motion to approve this item. Second. <laughs> okay, there's a motion by Mayor Bowders and a second by Member Donahue to approve this resolution. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Council Member Donahue. Aye. Council Member Martinez. 
Aye. Councilmember Welch. Enthusiastic aye. Vice Mayor Medina. Aye. And Mayor Bowders. Insert air horn sound here, aye. <laughs> okay, that resolution is approved. Thank you, um, Mr. O'Connell, and thank you, Mohammed, for being here. We'll move now to item 12.2, which is a resolution of the City Council of the City of Emeryville, making the required findings to continue remotely held meetings pursuant to Assembly Bill 361. There's no presentation on this item. The contents of the resolution are in the staff report and then the resolution. Sherry, did we receive any written comments on this item? We did not. Okay, is, is there any public comment on this item? Seeing no hands raised, public comment is closed. Members, is there discussion? Seeing none, is there a motion? I move. Okay, I recognize Member Donahue's motion. I'll second. And I have a second for Member Welch. Thank you. Please call the roll. Council Member Donahue. Aye. Council Member Martinez. Aye. Council Member Welch. Aye. Vice Mayor Medina. Aye. And Mayor Bowders. Aye. Okay, thank you. That resolution is approved. Item 13 is department head reports. Do we have any tonight, Madam City Manager? We do not, Mr. Mayor. Okay, thank you. We'll move to future agenda items from council members. Are there any future agenda items that wish to be discussed? I have one very brief one, which is that there is a proposed ballot measure that would actually inhibit the ability for cities to pass local taxes. Um, it would be extremely, extremely bad for the city of Emeryville. Um, and rarely will you ever hear me say, I want to support something the League of Cities is doing. But in this case, here I am. And I'm asking that we have, I'm asking that we have a future agenda item at the most convenient time for staff. I think probably could just be put on the agenda. There is a draft resolution, but we need to take a position on the item. And I would like to have a discussion about what position to take. Is there support to have a discussion about the proposed ballot measure? Yeah. The unanimous thumbs up. Okay. Thank you. Um, also, Madam City Manager. Just clarifying, Mr. Mayor, would you like us to invite um, Mr. DeLuca for that item? Actually, um, you know what? We could actually invite Sam Cago. That would be probably the better choice for this one, please. Thank um, you. Yes, thank you for that. And um, additionally, not time urgent, but also I would like to ask if we could have a present, very brief presentation. I do not want the long one that the Mayor's Conference received. Um, about um, Bay Adapt, the Bay Adapt plan. Um, and that could be that could be pushed out to sometime in, in March or April, it's not urgent. But the Bay Adapt plan in very brief is uh, BCDC is coordinating a number of regional agencies that deal with land use and planning to develop a comprehensive regional approach to sea level rise. And they are looking to have cities buy into the regional approach and there's a framework for it. About six or seven cities in Alameda County have already supported um, the plan, Bay, Bay Adapt, and what I'd like to do is give members a, an opportunity to hear the presentation from BCDC and uh, to decide whether or not we want to officially um, sign on as a signatory to the plan as it goes through the development process. It affords us the opportunity to weigh in on climate change and resiliency action and projects. Is there support to having a future meeting where we have an invitation from BCDC to do that? Okay, I see unanimous support for that. So we will have um, a future agenda item for that. Anybody else who have items? Okay, seeing none. The time is eight. Oh. Sorry, I'm sorry, Matt, I'm sorry, Madam Martinez. Uh, I'm sorry. Member Martinez. <laughs> Tell Member, me. Mayor, Member Martinez, sorry. Tell me, Stacey. Um, uh, just kind of in concert with that Bay Adapt um, meeting, I, through my day job, I've been made aware of the city of San Francisco and the city of Oakland tagging on suing um one of the big oil companies and i forget which one it was but i read the brief maybe last week uh to pay specifically for all the mitigations that they're going to have to do and i think it's to the tune of 500 million dollars um for you know it's it's per mile of seawall is the way that they're coming up with that number and um i just i'm wondering if at the bay adapt meeting if there's room for us to discuss you know those ways of potentially paying for whatever mitigations um, and whatever resiliency that, you know, we've, we've got our climate action plan 2.0, but we've never come up with a way of funding all of the things that we need to do um, to address sea level rise. And I think, um, you know, I'd love to have that conversation as well. I support that. Let me let me ask if the following would be acceptable to you as a process for that. Um, in the Bay Adapt presentation, there is a discussion about um, 
initial thoughts about how to finance something. And then perhaps since I don't want to presume the outcome of whether to endorse BayAdapt by the members here, um, assuming that we decided that it was a favorable thing and we were interested and we had the opportunity to ask questions, if that lends itself to um, us asking for them to send the send whomever you would find most appropriate to talk to us about that as a specific next step. If that would be okay with you, I would be happy to support that. If there's if there's council support for Bay Adapt as a plan, yeah, is that okay with you? I think that's a, a great order of events. Yes. Okay. Is that good with everybody else? We'll just simply we'll revisit. We'll just ask Member Martinez to re-raise her re recommendation, and we'll support. We'll take a discussion on supporting that at that time, so that. We've had the plan. We've reviewed it. Um, so, Madam City Manager, when we do it, can we have it be? Can we have it be? Do you want it to be an information item, or can it come with an action item if the council was ready to take action? Would we need a separate meeting to take action on Bay Adapt? You imagine? I guess I would just ask for a little bit of time for staff to assess what that um, support would mean um, in terms of you know our plan. I, I just don't know yet, so what we could do is come back with an action item. I, I don't know that there's a, a timeline deadline pressing, but I also can't remember the end of that presentation. So um, that would be my request to have it as an information discussion with some feedback from the council. And then if there is something that staff needs to look further into, uh, we would have that time to do that. I think that, I think and given what member Martinez has requested, it may be that we just have an information item to, or it could, I don't think it's a study session, but an information item to learn about it. And then we can then have our series of asks to have a future meeting to bring back a resolution. The information member Martinez has requested about um, opportunities to finance or fund some of these projects, ways to go about act, actualizing what it is that's going to be in the plan. So I think that we'll just, we'll just continue with that and you can do the research associated with that after we've heard the presentation. I think that makes sense. Thank you. Okay, anybody else? Okay, seeing none, the time is 7.54 p.m. and we are adjourned uh, 54 minutes before meetings. Great job tonight, everybody. Thank you so much and uh, take care of each other and we'll see you soon.